Check it out, Casper! Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in, Casper here, and Team Fortress 2's competitive matchmaking has been out for a while now, and whilst it is a good start, it is widely considered to have many outstanding issues. One such issue is the lack of a proper ranking system that could compare to many other popular games such as those found in Overwatch or Counter-Strike. However, the good news is that it has been confirmed several times now that a proper ELO based system is being worked on, both via the official vlog and as seen in an interview between Valve News Network and TF2 developer Dave Rilla. Matchmaking improvements, so specifically in competitive mode, we're bringing in an ELO system. The link to that full interview will be in the description. I do recommend you check it out after this video because it is very interesting. But the TF2 developer you saw speaking in that clip did make a mistake a lot of people make. The popular rating system known as ELO is actually called ELO, named after Arpad ELO, the clever man who created the system itself. So the purpose of an ELO system is to give all players a numbered rating which represents their skill. The system then uses that numbered rating in order to create matches of people around the same or similar rank. For example, the ELO scale might go from 0 to 1000. If your ELO number was 800, then you would expect all players in any random match to be at or around 800 as well. Because that number represents the skill, and the idea of the matchmaking system is to make an equal and balanced match. Therefore, having all players around the same skill level is one of its main objectives. Another important part of an ELO system is how your points are affected on a win or a loss. Naturally, winning will cause your ELO rating to go up and losing will cause it to go down. However, what is also taken into account is the ELO rating of your opponent. Imagine we're talking about a 1 versus 1 match. If your rating is 800 and your opponent's rating is only 700, then the rating system assumes that you are going to win because, according to the system, you are a better player. Therefore, when you do win, you only gain a small amount of rank increase because the system assumes you are likely to win anyway. Therefore, it's not that much of an achievement. Similarly, your opponent would only lose a small amount of points because the system assumes that they were likely to lose anyway. However, if things are the other way around, where the lowered rank player beats the higher rank player, the system then assumes that the rankings are possibly wrong or at least inaccurate. So as a result, it gives the lower rank player more points, effectively rewarding them for playing so well. And it also takes a greater number of points away from the higher player as a sort of way of saying, you probably should have won that. Because you didn't win that, I'm going to adjust your skill. Because possibly you should actually be ranked lower. And another thing that I would like to add here, and it's something which is desperately needed in Team Fortress 2, is that any new player entering the system is assumed to be average. If we use the skill rating from 0 to 1000, then any new player would enter the system at around 500, i.e. the middle of that scale. They then gain or lose points accordingly. We expect the distribution of players to look like your common bell curve. The majority of players are, by definition, average, so the majority of players will sit around the middle of this curve. As we get down to extremely bad and up to extremely good, there will be less players at the extremes, because they are, by definition, extreme. Most ranking systems use easy to understand groups of ratings rather than 0 to 1000. For example, if we plotted the CSGO ranks onto our graph, it may look something like this. So there's loads of people around these middling Nova ranks, fewer and fewer people towards the really high ranks, and fewer and fewer people towards the lower ranks. In reality, this distribution is unlikely to look this perfect, but this is here to just illustrate the point. Now, one thing about the original ELO system, created by Arpad ELO, was that it was actually created to rank players in the world of chess, which is, of course, a single-player game, and it's either a win or a lose. So it's difficult to apply the ELO system directly, one, to a team-based game, and two, to a game where there's plenty more measures of performance other than whether you simply won or lost. Enter Glyco 2, a different rating system. This is a system which Valve employees have previously stated that CSGO's ranking system is based on. Considering the fact that CSGO is of course made by Valve, who of course also make Team Fortress, it's quite probable that we'll at least see some similarities between this system once we get the update we're expecting to Team Fortress. The core mechanics of Glyco 2 are quite similar to ELO. You play a match against opponents and, based on the performance of both teams and the underlying rating of each team, you will gain or lose rating accordingly. 
However, Glyco 2 has some extra layers, and they take into account the rating deviation of a player and the rating volatility of a player, as well as giving more allowance for team-based calculations. Starting with volatility, this represents the system's confidence that you are in the correct rank, based on how consistently you play, i.e. if you win lots of games which the system already expects you to win, lose games it expects you to lose, and you have close games that the system expects you to have close games in, then your rank will have a low volatility factor, and therefore over time you will gain and lose fewer points on a win or loss because the system believes that it has ranked you correctly. On the flip side, if you lose when it expects you to win, or if you win when it expects you to lose, then your volatility factor will be high, because this suggests to the system that you're actually probably in the wrong rank, so it needs to adjust your position more often and more extremely in order to find where you really belong. It's worth noting that this volatility factor is constantly changing over time, and that will go up and down depending on win or loss streaks and your general individual performance. And just for the sake of clarity, yes, this factor is also sometimes taken into account in various iterations of the ELO system. The other additional layer I mentioned was the rating deviation of a player. This is more of a back-end factor, which, rather than give you a score of 800 that we used in our example earlier, the system will actually give you a range instead of a single score. So your actual range might be 750 to 850. This is because it's extremely difficult to give a single absolute number to represent someone's skill. So the maths behind the ranking system is constantly taking into account its own flaws, its own inaccuracies, by essentially saying to itself, I think that this person could be as good as an 850, but I'm also not quite sure they might be as bad as a 750. So I'm going to use this to take into account when I do the calculations. And boy are their calculations. Here's just some of the sums which go into the Glyco 2 system as published on the website Glyconet. Now obviously this is what a pure Glyco system looks like, but in practice our video games are going to have to use unique adaptations of this system in order to account for things unique to their games, such as kill death ratios, or points captured, or ubers dropped, or health healed, or allies extinguished, etc etc. As far as my personal understanding goes, wins and losses are still the most important factors, but the severity of those wins and losses, as well as the level of individual performance, are also taken into account. For example, if two equally matched teams, in terms of rating, play against each other and they play a best of three on King of the Hill, let's just say one of those teams wins 2-0 and the losing team gets zero time on the point, then we're going to expect the winning team to get more rank than if for example, the match instead went 2-1, to one, and it went into overtime on the very last round. In other words, this game was much closer than the first example. You can see that that first example involved one team winning very comprehensively, therefore suggesting higher skill, and therefore their rating should be adjusted to account for that higher skill. And in the second example, the teams were actually quite closely matched. Therefore, even though one team won, it should be taken into account that they didn't show that much greater skill, so even though that they will gain rank, they won't gain as much rank as if they'd beaten the team much more comprehensively. Similarly, if I played Medic and I did 1 million points of healing in one round, I got 300 kills, and I had the full 6 minutes of capture time solo, while somebody else on my team played Spy, and they got 1 kill and died 84 times with 0 destructions or capture time, then it should be taken into account that I did more to contribute to the team, and I should get a more generous rating adjustment than the Spy, who was a useless idiot. Or, if of course we lost, then I should lose less rating because even though I did lose, I still performed less bad than other people on the team. As I mentioned before, our video games will have their own adaptations of both ELO and or Glyco 2 and or other systems integrated, and they're going to have to have heavy customization both to balance and tailor these systems to the specific factors of their game. On top of that, no developer will ever publish exactly how their system works, otherwise people will find ways to cheat the system. For example, if it became clear that giving sandwiches to teammates had a high skill rating factor, then you would have a whole team of soldiers shooting themselves in spawn while a heavy gives out sandwiches for the entire round. So even though we won't have a pure ELO system, as this is designed for single player games, and we're unlikely to get something which is directly a Glyco 2 system, we will probably use the term ELO 
because pretty much every other game calls their system ELO, even though they absolutely aren't. And also because it's easier to remember and snappier than Glyco 2. Yet somehow the professionals seem to mess it up and call it ELO. This is ELO, a long-running old-school synth rock band from the UK. Not quite the same thing. Someone told me I'm precious 